Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the data tool demo ground. Uh, backed by popular demand, uh, we're going to get into this focus right battleground style format for the vacation rental industry's data tool providers. Um, each of these folks are going to give us a five minute demonstration of their platform. And we've got a panel of three esteemed judges who are going to be on hand to give them all of the questions that they can come up with in their seven minutes. So, um, Let's first meet those judges that are, you're going to be able to see on your screen who are going to be uh, who are going to be questioning the presenters. So first up, we've got Sarah Bradford of Winter Park and Steamboat Springs Lodging out in the mountains. Um, we've also got Tim Cafferty of Outer Banks Blue and Sandbridge Blue in North Carolina. Uh, you may recognize them from as the co-hosts of our industry podcast, Sarah and T. Um, and we also have former VRMA president, Mike Harrington of Carolina Retreats, also down in North Carolina, who is a returning judge for today's event, which is very exciting. So watch out for that one, guys. He was here last week or last year. Um, so we are going to stick to a pretty tight schedule. There's a lot of really great uh, presentations. I'm excited for the question formats as well. Um, so no prizes, just pride. And uh, you got five minutes. We're going to cut you off and then we're going to go into those seven minutes of questions. So first up, we've got Graham Blakenbaker from Beyond Pricing. Graham, I'm going to turn it over to you and we're starting the timer. Go ahead. Great. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, Okay, so thanks for having me today. Uh, I was, I'm was i going to introduce you guys to Insights from Beyond Pricing. So Insights is a new product in our product family that's designed to complement our industry-leading dynamic pricing offering, uh, as well as Relay, our OTA syncing product, uh, Signal, our direct booking and website solution, and Guidance, our personalized uh, revenue management offering. So I'm going to spend the next four or five minutes giving you all a quick tour of what Insights has to offer, and specifically how Insights helps our customers be smarter about their revenue management strategy. But uh, I would encourage you all to go to beyondpricing.com, give Insights a try. The product is free today. You can connect your entire portfolio, your historical data, and immediately get started um, helping uh, understanding and tracking performance across metrics that are important to your business. Uh, easily drill down into groups of listings to get specifics. Use data to troubleshoot whether you're pacing ahead or behind, identify gaps in your portfolio. Uh, I'm going to show you that today. And so with that brief intro, let's dig in and see how Insights can help. Okay, so here we're looking at an example uh, customer who's already connected to Insights. As a quick overview to orient, uh, you can see here we're showing total revenue for this customer and they're across their portfolio. You can see paid occupancy, you can see uh, ADR, average daily rates, booking lead time, cancellations by stay date, et cetera. Now I can quickly toggle these views to show the same information by booking date, if I prefer to see it that way, or a check-in date or some per listing information uh, as well. So this is a large customer with well over 1,500 listings uh, spread across three major markets, Florida Panhandle, South Florida Gulf Coast, Alabama Gulf Coast. And today we're gonna take a look into the near future. So let's shrink this window down to about three months. Uh, and we'll look at this year's data, last year's data, and let's go ahead and take a look at it at a more granular level by uh, weekday, uh, daily comparison. Okay, so how are we doing? Uh, revenue, doing quite well, uh, up over last year. Oh, okay, so down to occupancy. Uh, looks like quite a dip here in this early October period, a couple of weeks out. Uh, but ADR, my rates are a little on the high side. Uh, looks like here we've got 207 versus 170, and then so we're corresponding up here, uh, occupancy down, dip to 33% versus 56% from last year. So this suggests to me uh, too, that we're potentially overpricing for October. Now, as I mentioned, lots of listings here. So let's try to isolate the problem by drilling in using our filter and, uh, filtering capabilities uh, down to a smaller group of listings. Uh, I've got lots of lots of dimensions that I can choose from here to filter in real time. Got a nice little save filter that I've already created. It's going to look at my Florida Panhandle zero to two bedroom listings. Let's go apply that. All right, wouldn't be a live demo without a little slowness. This is this is a real account. We can blame the hurricanes. You guys are doing okay. 
Okay, so again, we're gonna look at listings in Florida Panhandle, zero to two bedrooms, and see if we see that same uh, gap uh, in, uh, in that same category of listings. All right, there we go. Looking about 800 sort of listings here. There's the same revenue gap. Okay, uh, yep, okay. So my occupancy definitely uh, for this group of smaller bedroom listings, um, definitely lower than I'd like to see uh, with rates higher. Okay, uh, so now if I wanted to, I could jump back up here to the revenue view and let's take a look at exactly some details uh, associated to this. All right, so I've got some listing level detail here. I could jump over and take a look at those. Uh, I can see for this listing, um, stats at the per listing level, everything from occupancy and revenue to revenue per available night. Um, but I've got a lot of listings here and I need to make a change in my pricing strategy. Um, so with only 30 seconds left here in my time, I'm gonna quickly do that. I'm gonna pull up the same set of listings. I'm gonna make a change to all of these guys. Uh, lots of different options uh, for how I can adjust that, but for the sake of today's conversation, We'll just do a quick override. We'll decrease that price since we're overpricing. We'll pick the same time frame of October. And save changes, and I'm done. So I think that's my five minutes. Uh, hopefully that was helpful and instructive, guys. I think we're gonna switch over to the Q&A portion. All right, you say you left yourself with 10 seconds. I love it. Um, so I don't even get to get my buzzer to go off to stop you. Come on, Graham. Uh, let's switch it over then. Um, Sarah, Tim, well, there it is. All right. Uh, Sarah, why don't you kick it off? Do you have some questions? You have a question for Graham? Told to be like on Shark Tank. When I use these tools, and we're usually in a meeting with two or three employees speed is everything we lose everyone's attention if what happened just happened talk to me about the slowness we just saw sure so one thing to note is this is a test account in a production environment with uh about 1600 listings i think all told so it's a quite a large account um, uh, in terms of the overall listing data that's available here uh, secondarily um, this is because it was a demo, uh, not not you know a, a production quality uh, set of uh, representative response times. I think most of uh, you know when we think about um, responsiveness and we think about uh, the engineering effort that supports all of these um, various views of data and the quickly you know accessible uh, different pivots between dimensions and whatnot, um, we do an extensive amount of caching on the back end to do that. So there's a lot of technical work that goes into it, but at the end of the day, really it's about that responsiveness. So um, I think. You know, for, for a normal customer, our 95% response time is within a few seconds. Uh, it's a great question, though. I think we're always looking to improve that. You know, it's it's uh, the, the challenging and interesting uh, problem space within uh, a, 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 a visual sort of insights tool like this is that um, you can never really predict the way your customers want to use it. And so we're always looking to see uh, how our customers are doing that and then fine tuning and optimizing the behavior, the responsiveness, and, all, and ultimately also the, the metrics and the presentations, the information independent of just sort of speed and responsiveness uh, uh, based on that customer feedback. Okay. Okay, so he's oh, saying there was an internet like problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, Graham, good job. I appreciate that you were not flustered during that. Uh, a flurry of activity there. You mentioned uh, off the cuff about what metrics were important to me, that we could uh, give you an analysis based on what metrics were important to me. How do you know it's important to me? Is this customizable in any way? Yeah, so our initial version of, of Insights was really informed by a lot of uh, early pre-product customer conversations, talking with uh, the, the thousands of Beyond Pricing customers out there um, who you know, no businesses, no two businesses are identical. There are a lot of common factors and a lot of common themes we heard from our customers about the data they wanted to see. And I think we tried to represent, um, you know, a lot of those here, uh, you saw quite the quick walkthrough on the overview and the other tabs. Uh, and so that was really, you know, the, the our, our first take at what we heard was broadly applicable to our customers. Um, Obviously, you know, we tried to facilitate some level of customization of those reports and the data dimensions and the attributes that were really relevant or most important by offering um, uh, extensible table views. I didn't really go into that. Um, 
Uh, so you can add columns to, to a lot of these reports. Uh, not everyone uh, is available for that yet, uh, but certainly some of our most used views, uh, that's user configurable and can be done on the fly. Uh, it doesn't require any administrator support from our side. That's, that's something that you as a, an end user could do. Um, uh, I think, you know, we, uh, we're shipping, you know, new um, new views of information, new additional attributes, uh, and new sources of that data on a really regular basis. Because um, not just because of uh, you know the, the the market behaviors we've seen uh, resulting from you know COVID's impact on on the travel industry, um, we're learning daily about uh, about how we can extend this so that it's more useful, uh, and always looking for for feedback from our small users as well as our very very large users. Like I was I was. Uh, demonstrating here. So, hey, Graham, uh, I liked the data uh, visualization. I think the charts are, are really good, um, you know, for for the, the non-technical person like like me. Um, that's really nice to see. You can spot something really fast. So so what I'm what I'm looking at, I know we had a very short amount of time is, is this is internal current versus historical data for this particular company. Is that is that correct? Uh, that's right. I, if 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 we had had more time, I would wanted would have wanted to show you some of the market comparison data that we provide. Uh, not just um, well, I feel like I, I shouldn't be continuing a demo here, but <laughs> uh, there, there's extensive. That. So you can you can pull in some third party uh, market comparison data as well, um, and then you know. I, so I guess one of the, the questions is with some of this insight stuff. I mean, I have all this in our software, right? So so someone what would be the difference between me just using running some reports in my software versus you or using another another layer of software and paying that uh, to, to get this information um, that, that's a that's a great question well for one you don't have to pay for insights it's free uh, second um, I think uh, we again given the, cons the time constraints uh, what I would have wanted to show you was um, because beyond pricing is connected to so many um, sources of information, not just the customers who bring their data to the table and use insights and use our other products as well, uh, but also third party data, uh, data we source from proprietary, proprietary partners, data we pull from, uh, let's say, OTAs or other um, big players in the travel industry. All of that data is aggregated into one place. So you can use that to help benchmark how you're trending relative to the broader market. Yeah. Still time for more? I guess so. Um, I was muted. Yes, Sarah, go for it. You have you guys have a minute and a half left. Okay. Well, okay. When you said um, common themes you hear from customers, what were some of those common themes? What are you hearing that customers want? Uh, yeah. So at a, at a very macro level, we've got a lot of customers who you know they, when they think about how they're optimizing their pricing strategy, for example, uh, they care significantly more about occupancy versus ADR and so the uh, downstream information that they would want to see as a result of that and, and um, you know drilling into some of the details at a per listing level uh, that affects you know whether they're going to care about um, whole sections or whole pieces of analysis that this product embeds um, so you know something as fundamental as that um, we can we, we don't really do this but we you could think of it as sort of segmenting uh, the customers who use some of these products uh, as far as how um, which of those top level KPIs they would choose uh, to, to manage their business. And they're, you know, the reasons for doing that are, are individualized, they're specific to uh, their, their strategy and their markets and, and the customers they're trying to serve. Um, so at, at, even at a very macro level, you see that kind of difference uh, down to sort of a much more granular level, you know, whether you're dealing with a, a drive to market or a fly to market, you're gonna start to look at um, you know, difference in, in booking lead times and other things like that. So. Um, you know, depending upon anything like the, the whether it's the, those high level strategy metrics or the uh, more um, uh, market specific metrics, uh, we, we hear sort of all combinations of those. Okay, because um, one thing I saw quickly on there, it said health score. And mm -hmm. that's something that we very much these types of tools because it seems very high level, all these graphs, and it's hard to dig down in. And really, I just want to know, which 10 properties are suffering so I can attack those. Is that what the health score is about? That's right. Health score is actually a proprietary beyond pricing metric that takes into account a number of the factors that you saw uh, weighted uh, and, and will vary depending upon which customer we're dealing with. Uh, and so it's, it's, 
it, it's one attempt that we have at, at sort of pulling the, the, those uh, various different pieces into one place you can see, okay, these listings, their health score is low, let me take action on those. All right, well, you heard that it was my phone, it's not me, the phone says that mm -hmm. is, that is time. So um, great job, Graham. Um, very fantastic, wonderful questions, Mike, Tim, and Sarah. Um, we are going to move on. Um, and we are going to move on to Tyler Ashby from Key Data Dashboard. So um, I'm going to make Tyler the presenter now um, so he can jump on. Fantastic. All right. Let me set, reset the timer here. Listen, guys, I do demos all the time, and I commend you all for, for jumping in here. This is great, and um, that was really impressive. So, Graham, I'm going to turn you off of uh, video here, and um, Tyler, hitting the start button. You ready? Ready. Let's go. My name is Tyler Ashby, and I'm the Director of uh, Customer Support and, and Customer Success at Key Data, and I have to tell you that before I was with Key Data, for 10 years, I was a professional property manager, just like you. And one thing that I know is that, man, reporting, analytics, spreadsheets, ugh, this stuff is hard. That's where Key Data was born. We uh, were developed by professional property managers for professional property managers. And we have something that's very unique. Being the number one trusted vacation rental data source really comes from the data, right? It's, it's through these direct source connections with professional property managers. We aggregate the data, we share it with our property managers, our destination partners, and also trend reports. Because we've got over 1,600 professional property managers sharing their data with us, we act as an affordable co-op for the vacation rental industry so that a company of any size can afford to benefit from these rich uh, aggregated data sets. When I talk about deep integrations, no longer is there a need for self-reporting. You don't need to fill in anything in a spreadsheet. We have a connection with over 30 different uh, integration partners, your property management systems, to feed the data to us to provide accurate, um, mm -hmm. real live data uh, for you to use. We are the gold standard of data. <laughs> and you know this sounds pretty lofty and we don't take it lightly, right? Our goal is to have 100% accurate key performance indicators um, in fact, we have over 23, but some that you may be familiar with, occupancy, ADR, RevPAR, some that are a little more complicated, we've got those too. Um, and so as you dig in, there's more and more available for you to learn. We also uh, keep up with supply and demand through scrape data. We provide uh, visualizations on emerging markets. And then something that everybody's pretty interested in, how am I doing compared to my competitors with our benchmarking data? Let me show you some reports that I know you're gonna love. So first off, our most popular report is our snapshot pacing reports. These are visualizations um, where you can see performance across your portfolio for any time, and it's pacing, so it's true apples to apples comparison. How am I doing now compared with, say, this time last year? Or what's my pickup between uh, two weeks ago and today for a certain time frame? This is totally, um, you can break it down uh, into different components, so you can segment your data. Um, you can do it by location, property characteristics, um, even custom unit groups to give you full custom ability. Uh, that market benchmarking, this is a favorite of a lot of folks. Um, it really helps to answer the question, you know, man, is it me or is it the market? Is everybody experiencing the that I am? And this can also be segmented, which is very important. You can see how are my two bedroom, beachfront condos doing, um, or maybe my four bedroom houses that are on the golf course. Um, so a lot of information to dig into whenever you're comparing to your competitive benchmark. New into our dashboard, rental projections. 
super exciting. Um, no longer do we need to use um, our gut feeling about a property. We can harness the data uh, within your market to provide you with real, actual, accurate rental projections to help with owner acquisition, but also to help get a property started off on the right foot. We understand that a lot of time, the pricing that you put on a property really that's the rate that you're going to use in the first year so let's start it off right and then something very exciting to announce for fall of this year we're releasing budgets to help you fill the expectation gap man uh, budgets don't sound very sexy at first but after over 400 customer uh, requests we have budgets that are going to be releasing in the fall so that we can look at past performance uh, forecast out the future and also give you a place to put in your expectation. Uh, well, I'm going to jump in. Right. Yeah, go right. Go. I was just going to say you have you, you too left yourself with 10 yeah. seconds. I love it. And we should <laughs> know that Tyler is down in the panhandle where there is a, a active, uh, hurricane happening. So thank you for, for the great connection on here. Um, Tim, you want to jump in with a question on this one? Kick it off. Yeah. So the title of the session was Data Tool Demo Ground. And I'm sorry to be uh, kind of dense on this. I'm not sure what we were demoing there. Are you talking about the key data dashboard or was it the uh, rental management tool, the budgeting? What exactly are we analyzing here? I'm sorry tools within our key data dashboard so those screens that i was sh i was showing you were actual screens from a live dashboard um, and what we what we want to be is really a partner for vacation rental companies um, to help optimize multiple areas of their business not just revenue management but owner acquisition and also um, operational uh, efficiencies so the data that we're receiving has value across multiple areas within your dashboard. So no longer do you need a different tool for every single um, aspect of your business. Instead, let us help you get there um, in one place. So um, Tom, full disclosure, we, we use key data dashboard. So we have a little bit of uh, insight into this. Um, can, can you explain to me, because this is new to me on the direct connect data from software partners and how you guys use scrape data because that is a little bit of a hole right so um in some markets a lot is professionally managed a lot is not so you got to be able to take take it all into account which means you got to be able to get you know data from vrbo or airbnb or, or what have you so how does that work now uh with with the scrape data Sure, yeah, so I mean, first and foremost, we believe that the direct fed competitive data within your markets is probably the most valuable information. These are people that are working businesses just like you in your neighborhoods, um, but we understand that there's a certain market share um, that's you know on Airbnb or VRBO, maybe it's a second home. Um, and so we've been scraping the data in order to uh, fill that gap. We believe that the best information is direct fed, but secondary to that, to fill that supply gap, we've been scraping that information as well. Yeah, so here's what I hear sometimes with that, to, one second, that uh, you'll hear a homeowner who manages on their own and they say, well, I do twice as much as what the management company can do. And I'm like, please share that information with me. <laughs> Sure, yeah, I mean, we, we know there are problems with um, comparing a professionally managed property to a property that's on Airbnb or VRBO. I mean, um, you know, if, if this is my house that I'm renting out, I don't really have to get, uh, you know, I don't have to keep it booked. I can, I can wait around or not book it at all for, for some outrageous price. And then also, you know, if we're scraping down the data how do we know the difference between a, a real booking or a, a block or an owner stay or a friend of an owner? And what's, what's great about us is that we have real data in each market to inform our decisions, right? To inform what we believe the scrape data to be so that we can better interpret that data to share with our partners. Uh, 
Okay, I got to give a shout out to Graham because in Shark Tank style, he did have the cojones to do a demo and I ripped on the speed. You didn't even give it a shot. So maybe that's because there's a hurricane where you are. Um, so Tyler, we use key data as well. One big issue we have with the market benchmarking is that you're comparing us to hotels and crummy hotels and companies that have kind of junky two bedrooms. So they don't, it doesn't mean much. How do we get better on that market benchmarking so we can really compare to like properties? How do you know if one house is as nice as another house? Sure, and I think that that is a wonderful question. And it's also, um, it, it's it's a question that, you know, many, many people have, right? They wanna make sure that they're comparing uh, true apples to apples. And we're working on a couple of different projects to help get us to that mark. Um, and, and also not every market is exactly like yours. Um, a lot of markets we've got, you know, tons of, of uh, like companies that, that provide great data. But um, where there is a gap, we're working on the ability for you to be able to um, better segment your data and then track your sample size so that you can make sure that um, you have a proper sample size for a very segmented um, data set to make sure that you really can compare apples to apples. In addition to that, we often talk to people about, you know, what is there to learn from the benchmark data? And it's not necessarily always to learn about whether or not, you know, you should raise the price by $10 a night or lower it. Um, but it's often used to spot trends within your market. So, um, you know, is everyone struggling right now with this certain week or is it a pricing issue that I have and I should be lowering my rate? And oftentimes we can find answers to those questions within the dashboard. That's a really good point. Go ahead, Tim. Tyler, you indicated that, uh, well, uh, we just heard recently, you've uh, got a partnership now with the RMA with regard to offering this and you talked about being market specific in my markets the largest competitor i have is not part of your data set are you looking at any uh incentives or ways to get those big players to buy in and play it with us yeah so i mean first off you guys know us and and you know know what we're about and we really want to be a product for everyone so um you know, our our vision is really to be this co-op of data to to provide the value to to the marketplace. And so, there are uh, certainly some markets where you've got one big giant in the room um, that doesn't play with anybody, and and that's the case in several markets around the country. But we're actively working to um, to to provide value to those folks as well. Their data is very very important for all of us, especially if they're kind of the Goliath setting the the market rate. Um, it's it's important for us to get there. And to touch on your question about Tyler. Barbara. Oh, Sorry, I hear Tyler. it. I hear oh, it. It's not me. It's not me. It's the phone. I'm sorry. Um, you're just going to have to follow up with Tim about the Verma response at a later date here. Um, all right. Great questions again. Wonderful responses. We are going to get all set up. Um, we've got Anarog Verma from Price Labs joining us here. So let's find you on the. Oh, he, wow. He is. He's ready. We're going to. I'm going to make you the presenter. You are. You are going to get a notification. All right. Can All right. everybody hear me? Yes, sir. And see my screen. We can, and you are. Uh, we are putting. I am setting the timer. So let's do this. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Um, for those who don't know us, uh, Price Labs is more known for dynamic pricing. We connect with about 45 property management systems uh, for the vacation rental industry. One of the things that happened uh, during COVID was a lot of a lot of our uh, 
pricing product revolves around being able to customize your pricing strategy, be it length of stay, be it last minute discounts, be it day of week settings, uh, length of stay settings. And one of the things that happened during COVID was everybody's trends, the settings they used to have sort of changed on the dime. And a lot of people wanted to know, hey, uh, people say they are getting longer length of stays. I have not seen them yet. I want to know if that's happening in my market or not. Or I'm getting a ton of shorter book short booking windows uh, or like last minute bookings. Is this happening in my entire market or is something else happening? I want to know. Um, so what we did uh, as a result was instead of showing all the data that we have always been showing, which is the market data for prices and occupancy, forward-looking data, we also started uh, working on top of it. Uh, and I'm going to show very quickly where you can pick an address and a radius and see really what kind of trends, what kind of recovery trends, booking windows, length of stays, whether uh, people there is a sudden surge in bookings or dip in bookings uh, in the market happening. This is all coming from uh, market data that's coming from the OTA. So we are scanning the OTAs and figuring out when a property disappears, what mm -hmm. price it disappeared at, and then things like that. Um, a quick note, these reports are free till the end of October and they will be 999 $9.99 or 10 bucks per month afterwards. Uh, quickly jumping into the reports themselves. Where did it go? Okay. So uh, if you go to Price Labs and log in and uh, hit the market dashboards, you'll see a button here that says create a new dashboard. You can enter any address around the world. Uh, it, it can be anything as long as it has some vacation rentals there. Uh, and you can put a radius so you can be pretty specific around this. Uh, and once you create the report, it will show up in this table here. Uh, I've opened up a report for Galveston, Texas. Uh, what you'll see here is one, there is a filter for bedrooms. Um, so right, again, if you want to only focus on the properties that are your size that your, your portfolio uh, matches a little bit you can do that you can see where those properties are you can also see over the last few months every week how many bookings have been coming in those properties so this was during covid where very little was happening as summer was approaching in galveston galveston is a beach market it's uh, it's on the coast of texas uh, as summer was approaching, a ton of people were booking. And then during summer, there was a slight dip and then uh, it has been steady or decreasing at this point, given that fall is coming through. But more importantly, the data that people were looking for and, and we really wanted to provide was again, the forward looking data to show what kind of occupancy is there in the market right now. So the blue line you see is, uh, is occupancy for every day and you can scroll backwards. Uh, one of the things you'll see is, for example, Labor Day went almost 85%. The weekend before that was 40%. Uh, this was actually Hurricane Laura. So if you see the, the orange line, that depicts how many cancellations happened uh, on that date for that stay date. Uh, and you'll see that the occupancy was low for this weekend because Hurricane Laura was, was, uh, was in the forecast in some ways. Now, the other important trend that people really want to see is... Uh, not just pricing and occupancy, but also what kind of lead time and length of stay metrics are out there. So this one shows how many, so each color is the length of stay. So there are people booking one night stays in this market, but a majority of stays are two or three or four nights. You also see that as the as the day of stay approaches, the length of stay generally tends to reduce. So uh, very few people are booking uh, short stays really far out but as you get closer and closer the share of shorter stays keeps increasing so this helps you figure out what kind of minimum stay strategy you, you should use for example you can start out with longer stays try to book your calendar with length, longer stays and then as it gets closer book shorter and shorter stays and if it, it also helps you figure out by having your minimum stay settings too high are you rejecting too much of your demand uh, the rest of the report is again goes into what kind of amenities are common in the area and what kind of amenities are people booking in the area. Uh, and lastly, most important is uh, policies and fees. So weekly discount, what kind of weekly discounts and monthly discounts people are setting. I have my own timer here, which went off. Um, for example, here you see a lot of people are setting, not setting any long, st long stay discounts for monthly stays, and they are disproportionately not getting those bookings. Whereas people who are setting those discounts are actually getting a larger portion of longer stays. So it just helps you figure out what kind of policies should you have on your properties. Uh, and lastly, 
after all of this is done, if you want to share these with your owners, you can also export this as a PDF. Um, so if an owner says, hey, I want to do X on my property, you can share it and say, hey, this is the market data that we have for the area. And it tends to suggest that it might not be the best policy. I think the time and is that's up. that's all she wrote. All right. Uh, Mike, would you like to kick off the questions this round? Uh, Mike, I think you're on mute. Oh, Mike is on mute. Got it. Sorry. Um, so yeah, we're eager to look into this. Um, so just, I know five minutes is not a lot of time, but you know, this seems like very macro for a market, right? Is that what it's designed to be, or can you can you dive in uh, to property specific data or something like that? Right. So right now it is. Uh, so uh, it depends on how you define market. Right now you. You can choose an address and a radius around it, so you can be very specific if you want to. Um, and then you can filter by bedrooms. We will be adding things where you can choose certain segments of properties. So maybe segment by number of reviews or by whether it's uh, managed by a property manager versus individuals or not. Uh, whether you can pick properties specifically, that's that we, we still haven't decided on that yet. Yeah, that, so the, the, the radius thing just, yeah. Sometimes it's not a good way to do it because I can have a two bedroom home and then five 20 bedroom homes around it, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I mean, providing segments in terms of filters is, is something we, we will be doing. Um, we, we still don't know if we want to be uh, everybody to be able to, like, you know, select every single property and then only look at those. Part of the thing also here is we have generally seen if you pick a market or pick the radius to be really small and there are few properties then the trends are a little haywire because uh, i mean smaller numbers result in a lot of noise whereas if you have a, a larger set of properties you get to see some trends so one thing we always say like this is not just because you see something happening in these reports doesn't mean that you should do it this right. is for this is for you to spot trends so for example is a certain date far out in the future booking more than others uh, it even if it is in properties that are not the most attractive it generally means something is happening something is up on on that week for example but yeah sorry NRAG, did i say it right yeah um we just saw key data we saw them show some similar trend graphs how is Price Labs different? What do you offer in that comparison of occupancy and comparison of revenue that would be different than key data? Right. So one big difference that I think Tyler as well mentioned was key data was mostly uh, source data. So they were looking at property managers' uh, own data, whereas ours is a sort of scraped data from the market. So one thing that we sort of have uh, in, in some ways is you can pick any market. Uh, we don't need to have customers in that market for you to be able to see what's happening in this market. Uh, the second one is uh, generally the, the kind of points that we get to see about all kinds of policies, so the supply side of thing. I think key data also has that though. Uh, the supply side of things like what kind of cancellation policies are common in this area? What kind of extra guest fee do people charge in this area? Uh, you can see all of that without uh, without necessarily looking at the reservations that are happening in this area because this is supply data that's out there. And do you, are you able at all to take in owner nights into account? Because that seems to be a big problem with all of these tools. Yep. Is it does, like if an owner grabs three months, it mm -hmm. skews the data, but we don't know why. Right, so uh, it depends on what kind of owner nights it takes. So because this is scraped data, we don't, if three months go away, we don't know whether it's an owner booking or not. There are kinds of owner bookings that we are able to take out, but there are others that just resemble any other reservation, in which case we are not able to take it out. Now, what going back to what I was telling Mike about looking at this more from an aggregate perspective, uh, if somebody, if one owner has taken out three months for next summer, I'm, I'm, I'm making this up, uh, that's almost irrelevant to us. As in, when you look at this, uh, the forward looking charts, it will show up as a very minor blip. But if like 30% of the owners in the area have taken something out, that will show up as a big blip to say, hey, like 
why why is every owner coming up in this weekend and you almost want to react to that you almost want to know that hey like during this period a ton of owners are taking up inventory and uh, because of that there is fewer inventory left to sell uh, so again this is what we have created is to to be able to spot trends that look abnormal and to figure out what to do about those Okay, I want to get a question in here quickly, but first of all, I want to give you kudos. First of all, on the branding, great T-shirt, headset and microphone, excellent as well, so we can hear you very clearly. Okay. And you work the pricing in there, so smooth move there as well. So, uh, but I'm concerned. I'm in a market that does not use OTAs for the uh, great majority on rack. So only about 15% of our bookings are OTAs. Right. And so you mentioned 45 ma uh, PMS systems. I'm going to give you a twofold question. How does that help? And can you give us some specific success stories from COVID? Because we all went through a roller coaster about we never right. thought we were getting another booking, and then we could not get enough inventory. So yeah, yeah. grab that so, if you would. Right. So I'll answer the first part of the first question first, which was now I can't remember it anymore. Uh, well, I was talking about the PMS systems and that helping me because I don't right. have a big OTA. Probably. Right. So actually, before that, you're, you mentioned that only 15% of your bookings come through the OTAs. That yes. doesn't matter as much to us because it's not like Airbnb is telling us that these bookings or Verbo is telling us these bookings came through us. What happens is those nights, when regardless of where the bookings come from, the nights disappear, uh, which is how we know. So as long as in significant inventory is listed on the OTAs, uh, you're still going to get most of the information here. Uh, okay. The PMSs. We are connected to these PMSs for our dynamic pricing services. Uh, so we integrate and push our rates out. We also get reservation data out, and uh, I, I shouldn't. Uh, we, we have a product in, in the works for showing every, every user their own data and being able to compare with the market and stuff. Uh, that data also helps us figure out like what kind of trends should you see in bookings, right? Like if, if somebody is booking a three month long stay nine months out, uh, and in our reservation data, it almost never happens. It kind of says like, yeah, it might not be real in some ways. Uh, did did I hear the ring go off? You did. That was that okay. was good. Sorry. You did hear it. <laughs> ah, Tim, we're gonna have to have you go first next time so you can get yeah. both those questions in. Yes, yeah, in a row. Nine ninety nine a month. Go figure it out. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. So next. Up, we have Will Sanford with STR. So we are gonna make we are gonna make Will the presenter now, and we'll let him get set up here as I reset the timer. Great job, everybody! This is amazing. I love this. I'd like to do this every Tuesday afternoon. All right, All Will, right. you are up. Go for it. All right. Good morning and good afternoon. My name is uh, Will Sanford and I'm an analyst with STR's research and development team, or my focus is on creating analytic tools for the short-term rental sector. Uh, as a little background, we have been providing benchmarking and analytic solutions for the global hotel industry for more than 30 years. Uh, currently, we collect 100% source data uh, on nearly 70,000 hotels in 180 countries, covering 9.1 million hotel rooms. On the short-term rental front, we have similar ambitions. Uh, given our long track record and global reputation in the hotel industry, uh, along with our commitment to data integrity, in 2019, we began developing a data platform for short-term rentals. Uh, currently, we are piloting two different reports in four markets around the globe and are growing quickly. Uh, in terms of data integrations quickly, uh, we make it as simple as possible on our data partners. We are collecting data directly from property managers, uh, and their PMS systems on a daily and monthly basis at the market level, property level, reservation level, uh, depending on data partners' capabilities. Uh, as part of the demo ground today, uh, I'd like to spend the next few minutes previewing the Portfolio Index Report, uh, which not only provides short-term rental performance trends, but also benchmarks those trends against STR's sourced hotel data sample. Um, for starters, most of what you need is here in the summary tab. Uh, the summary tab has three key parts. Uh, the first section is the indexing summary at the top. With, this gives you a quick visual understanding of whether or not your portfolio is performing better or worse than other short-term rentals and other hotels in the market. A value of 100 indicates that your portfolio is performing lower than the market. 
or a value of less than 100 indicates that your portfolio is performing lower, and a value of greater indicate 100 or greater indicates that performance is better. The second section is a high-level performance summary in the middle, which summarizes occupancy, ADR, and REVPAR for the respective portfolio and market. Uh, the market values are summarized by sector for short-term rentals and for hotels, so you can easily compare. Uh, I'll quickly note that the summary tab does not break out hotel data by class. The additional performance tabs uh, index portfolio data for all hotels as well as hotels minus economy and mid-scale properties and those are the hotels that our data partners have indicated are more competitive with their properties. Uh, third portion of the summary tab is the additional KPI trends for short-term rental specific indicators. Uh, this includes average cleaning fee per stay and average length of stay. Uh, next up is the performance trends detail section. This section of the report summarizes performance trends in a little more detail for occupancy, ADR, and REVPAR, uh, including monthly performance trends, seasonally adjusted performance, and percent change values, as well as market level data for hotels and short-term rentals. Uh, here's a quick rundown of how to read this report. The line charts at the top left corner summarize the monthly occupancy performance for, for the portfolio and market level data for other short-term rentals and hotels. The section directly below the line chart summarizes performance by unit type. The gray section indicates the performance, the portfolio versus market index value, which compares your performance against the market. Below the short-term rental monthly trends by unit type are the monthly hotel performance trends, along with index values in gray. Note that this section includes all hotels as well as hotels minus economy and mid-scale properties. Moving back toward the top of the screen, the bar chart in the top middle summarizes the portfolio versus market index value by unit type. Uh, as you can see, the portfolio has done more poorly in the current month, while the R3 and R12 benchmark values indicate that the portfolio is much more competitive with the market when looking at previous time. Did we lose you, Will? Sure. Got some buffering going on. Uh, well, in addition to occupancy, we have this same view. Yes. We lost you there for, I'm not sure what you said, but we lost you for about 10 seconds. Okay. I don't know where exactly my connection cut off, but uh, I'll wrap up. I have two more quick slides. Uh, we provide the view that we had on occupancy for revenue um, for average daily rate as well as for REVPAR. Um, it allows you to get the key decision points in one place for you to understand what are your rate trends, what are the rate trends of other short-term rentals in the market, as well as what are the rate trends for hotels, as well as short-term rental ho comparable hotels. And that is our portfolio index report uh, that is currently in the pilot phase, and we look forward to working with our data partners over the next several weeks to get their feedback on how they're using it and integrate that feedback as we uh, work towards developing a, a product. All right, nice That's job. Um, thank you. Tim, let's have you go first uh, so you can get your question in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start the timer for our questions and um, you're up. Okay, thanks Will. I think we are all excited about the name presence of Smith Travel Research or STR as we know now. But I have to be frank with you, if I understand this correctly, your your test is in Philadelphia, Nashville, Miami, and London. And it involves a lot of hotel data. Why should I care as a vacation rental manager? Because I, I don't compete with hotels in my market. Sure. So our first objective is to find the processes that we need in order to scale this on a much larger scale. Uh, and currently we're focused on those four markets and understanding all the different data integrations that need to occur for us to be able to get a, uh, a global data sample underway. Um, okay. 
eventually we're going to be able to segment that data sample by single family properties as well as the multifamily vacation rental options uh, and we'll be able to understand those two segments versus hotels as well as subgroups of hotels gotcha all right uh, well, Mike is going to go next. He now is a fancy owner of a hotel, so he can give us the hotel side. But nice. um, my quick feedback is that reminded me of my Wells Fargo advisor going through my portfolio and my eyes roll back into the back of my head. We like a little more granularity and names of our properties, and I don't want to see the word unit. So that's my feedback. If you listen to our podcast, we do not consider that we manage units. So I would get that word out of there. Um, my question for you is, I'm like the mean lady on Shark Tank. I have taken the mean role. So my Sorry, question Sorry, we've got you, next to a bed bath and beyond. <laughs> <clears throat> I, my question is, as you are getting into the vacation rental world where we don't like the word units, and we're different. What's your biggest challenge and what problem are you trying to solve you still haven't quite solved that's so different from hotels? So our goal is to do is to have a product in the short-term rental space that is from source data. And all the resources and expertise we're able to leverage from our hotel experience is has been critical. However, there's a lot of nuances to the short-term rental space that we are accounting for, and we're working very closely with uh, data partners and other people in the space to understand, uh, first off, how their data is and how to structure it. Your feedback just now was very important, and uh, definitely we'll take the word unit out. <laughs> but this is a uh, – no, I, I really appreciate that. This is a uh, – this is in the pilot phase right now, and we're, we are on a fact-finding mission to – uh, not only develop the infrastructure to scale this, but also to, you know, develop a, you know, visualization, a visualized product that is meaningful to people. Uh, and we, uh, we are working to just chart out everything as best we can. But like, what is the biggest thing that you have run into with vacation rentals that is a different problem you have to solve from hotels? What is something you're like, whoa, this is tough with the data? Sure. So a lot of our data providers uh, don't have the the resources in house to uh, get us the data in you know a, a a hotel ready type format, and so we've been getting a lot of reservation level data, which has posed a interesting uh, challenge for uh, processing the data and getting that data into a format. And we've come a long way to get that data processed and being able to visualize it. So I, I would say the, the data formats and just working with a different, working with clientele with a different level of uh, expertise and data. That's going to continue to be a challenge, just FYI. Um, so a couple of things. Um, is this is this a tool or is this just going to be like you envision this being a report that say I sign up for it and I get this monthly report that has all this information and I, I like having the hotel market data in there. I think it's a good baseline just to give you an idea of what's going on. Um, again, like I, I'm in a similar market than, than probably Tim where, where I wouldn't really say hotels are our competitors. They're, they're there. Um, so you just kind of, you got to have a, you know, finger on the pulse, but um, that's not really, you know, super important to me when I look at these things. Um, so, so maybe talk about that, you know, tool versus report seems very macro again you know and we're we're like we're operating 100 miles an hour every day so we kind of need this information pretty quickly you know right so uh two things there first off this is um a first iteration of a report for monthly trends uh it is available at the portfolio level we do have another product or another report that we are piloting right now that allows the user to uh, select specific properties within their portfolio and then benchmark those against the market. Uh, but eventually we are moving towards uh, having competitive sets for short-term rentals uh, where the user will be able to select which properties in particular they find themselves most competitive with and then benchmark themselves against that group. Uh, it's something that we've been very successful doing on the hotel side and 
that we've heard from all of our data partners that is uh, important to them. So we are uh, pushing forward on our product roadmap, um, but we just have not gotten that yet. So this right now, I would say, is a, is a tool or is a report, um, but we are we are developing the infrastructure to put together a tool that is interactive. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Great job. Um, all right. Up next, folks, we've got Desiree Garcia and Maureen Schilling from Streamline. So, all right. Let me, Desiree, let me make you the presenter here. All right. Great. Can you guys see my screen? Awesome. Yes. And we are starting now. Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody. My name is Desiree Garcia, and I'm with Streamline and RevMax. RevMax is the revenue management uh, portion of the system. And RevMax is, whereas the system is property managers for property managers, we are revenue managers for revenue managers. So myself included and everyone on our team is revenue managers from the industry, whether it's vacation rentals, hotels and resorts worldwide. So we bring you today all of our new tools that we are dropped into the system under our RevMax platform and our landing page. The first piece is our executive dashboard where you get some quick level uh, business results of how you're doing. We give you your daily revenue, month to date and year to date, and a quick performance and a quick KPI of if you're up or down. All revenue is reported on a nightly level, regardless of accounting. It's just straight room rent. And then we'll give you a quick what vacation homes are performing, underperforming relative to the group so you can quickly identify who needs some extra attention to get you up to par with everybody else in the in the portfolio. We also give you a quick look of how you're performing for the year. So column is this year, line is last year, and if you hover, you see those results, as well as a monthly performance, whether you're up or down from a room revenue perspective. We'll also show you quickly your mix of business. So if you, know, if you have OTAs or if you have more owners, direct bookings, what that mix looks like and what's the revenue share it's attributing to, as well as a quick key below. We'll also give you some quick KPIs, high level, your arrivals, departures, bookings, occupancy, ADR, and cancellations relative to last year. And when we say last year, we're talking same day of week, not necessarily, or same, not necessarily date, day, same day of week. So that way it's an apples to apples comparative. So high level, you have that when you log in. Um, from a market comparative, we go right into our pricing tape chart. Some of you may know this tape chart. It's where you can manage your pricing on a nightly level by uh, vacation home. And we've dropped in some cool features here for you. First, we give you your market comparative through LSI. LSI is our partner, so it'll automatically pull zip codes and bedroom sizes that are relative to the group that you're searching. It'll give you the ADR, occupancy, length of stay, the booking window for that night, as well as their RevPA. Um, we also give you your ADR, occupancy, RevPA, and ADR for the day for the group, so you can see how you're performing to the market. And then these white lines are also in here, so you can change your dates, or I'm sorry, change your pricing if you needed to make any pricing adjustments quickly to the market. As well as we've integrated with Verbo and Market Maker. So the Market Maker price for your unit for that day um, will show here as a suggested price. And if you wanted to match it, you simply just type it in the value and make those changes for you. Uh, everything here, the LSI data piece is relative again just to the comp set um, by bedroom size and zip code. And then we also give you some additional filters. If you wanted to get more granular and see some different statistics and performances, we drop that in for you. And right now we are working on a uh, tool where you can actually choose your own competitive set to where you can choose it from Airbnb, VRBO, Booking.com. So you get more specific on who you're competing with. That will be released in our next quarterly release. And that data will drop right in here, as well as giving you some of that insight in order to make better strategic uh, pricing decisions. 
Uh, some other reporting that we've also launched is our RevMax line advanced analytics. And all of our reports will give you an as of date this year versus last year or whatever calendar dates you decide to choose for, as well as whatever output you need for years. The additional filters, you can run your data in a number of different ways. Nightly check-in, check-out. You have all your res types that you can choose from, sources, different pricing groups, locations, areas, however your data is set up in the system, you have that functionality. You get the results in a high-level macro view. You can then see your revenue by month. And then as you scroll down, you can see the revenue by segmentation, by pricing group, as well as then by individual door. All of our reports are interactive. So as you scroll down, you can see all of your vacation homes names listed to the right, the values of month, because that's what I ran it for. And then if you need to go and see who's your top performers, who's your bottom performers, you can just quickly click and you see who's doing well and then who we need to strategize for more on a granular level. And then if you need to search a specific unit, you can just type right in and then the report will also operate for you and change accordingly. That was perfect, perfect timing. I feel bad cutting you all off, although I'm not going to lie, <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, all right, Sarah, Tim, Mike. Um, Mike, why don't you, I'm not sure who the mean lady on Shark Tank Sarah was referring to was, um, but let's, <laughs> let's have Mike go first this round. Um, good information. I really like the dashboard. Um, I think that's, that's hitting a lot of the, the really high level things, you know, that, that people are concerned about day in and day out. Um, tell me a little bit more about the, the market data. So. I know LS, LSNL has a tool that or uh, is able to do that. So I guess I guess what's the volume of data that you're getting to make it actually usable? Is that something sure. you're still working on or is it, you know, are you there? Absolutely. So right now with LSI, it's actually anyone who's signed up with LSI. Um, when we get to the competitive set where you can actually choose who you're competing against, that's public information. So as long as there's a URL, whether it's a, property management company, whether it is a specific unit within a tower building or specific homes within a neighborhood, you'll have that flexibility to specifically look and say, these are the ones I want to compare it to because these are my direct competitors, as well as you can choose different channels of distribution. Say you have units on Expedia that you compete with versus Airbnb and VRBO, we give you that flexibility as well. And is this a standalone tool or is this, you have to be a streamlined user to use it? Today, it's a streamline only tool. Okay. Okay. I, I think I'm going to get you to repeat what you just uh, talked about there, Desiree. I, so I'm analyzing my data when I see this, but I'm also analyzing other people's data. And you indicated the partnership, partnership with LSI tools. So are you telling me that those folks who signed up with LSI are giving permission for you to use the data in a competitive set? Almost. So LSI's data is opaque, but we have another partner where we're providing direct competitive information. Okay. And then one more quick follow up on the figures I saw there. You were ranking the properties top to bottom. What do those figures represent in the rankings? Is that gross revenue? Does that include fees? What does that figure represent? Absolutely. So by default, it represents your nightly rent uh, for your for your reservations. However, we do have the option within the filters to include certain fees. And depending upon how your system is configured, you can include like room rent add-ons and things like that. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> there is no mean person on woman on Shark Tank. I'm just saying if I was on Shark Tank, I'd be the mean woman. Okay. <laughs> Desiree, I use Streamline. Yes, uh, I love this kind of dashboard. In fact, you gave me this kind of dashboard for a while and then took it away. So is this an add-on price and why? Yes, this is an add-on price. And mainly um, because this is more advanced revenue analytics and as a provider to the industry, 
as all of our presenters are here, right there, it's not an included piece. So it is an, it is, it takes development work and professionals to come up with this. It's not necessarily just a tech system. So that's why it's an added piece because there's different, a different group that will bring this product to you. Okay, and I wanna say if uh, Will's listening that this is the type of thing we like to look at. It's a quick way for an owner to glance at something and see what's wrong. So I love the UI. My question is only, uh, well, I have lots of questions, but one for today is when you show underperforming properties, how do you reflect back to that owner nights question? How do you reflect that the owner has grabbed it most of the summer so it's really not underperforming? Are you factoring that in? So today we're not. It's simply just this is the revenue. This is who we need to look at. And maybe it is that the owner has a block in there that they didn't know about and we need to follow up with. So it's more of just a red flag. And if you know that the owner is blocked, then it's just one less unit for you to skim through. But ultimately, we're giving you everything that's not up to par. We have some more time. So you also yeah, mentioned uh, market, and a half, Mike. Uh, market maker. So tell me how that works. So you know, we heard a lot about that. I guess it's been a year or so ago, and I've kind of not heard about it since. So is that still like a thing? And how are, how are you using that? Perfect. So Market Maker is available through the Verbo platform. So any client who is signed up with that, you know, they use that. They'll choose their own comp set on that platform based upon um, their algorithm. They give you the option, you know, on their recommendations or you can choose your own market. And then basically they'll give you pricing recommendations. So instead of going to the Verbo platform, looking at pricing recommendations and then coming back into the system, we just drop that pricing recommendation right into your pricing tape chart where you'd make your pricing changes across the board. So you're looking at LSI information, which would be source data and then market maker, which would be effectively OTA data, correct? Correct, mm -hmm. yes. So LSI is the actualized and then market makers the suggested price. Yes. Okay. For questions, guys, we have time for one more real quick one. We've got about 10 seconds. You okay, I got back. a quick one. How do you handle showing growth? So how do I know that I didn't just add a bunch of properties to get from 726 thousand to one million how are you are you doing properties that have gone off the program or if they're off the program are they not in this anymore absolutely so within the configuration of the unit there's some parameters that you can set as well as within our reporting options there's as of dates when units came on rental so you have the choice to say do I want to see all my inventory as of today and now let me see it without the new inventory added this year and non-renting inactive units all right um well that was an hour who's <laughs> tired sarah tim mike you guys were great uh thank you so much to all of our judges and to all of the presenters as i said earlier um this was probably a little um a little uh uh nerve-wracking and um but you have some friendly faces on the other side i like the questions that came in um as with everything uh you know great folks coming in here some great new tools being introduced into the industry and improvements to some of the existing tools so um we are going to be able to finish up here just a couple of minutes early um and we encourage you to take it take a moment to grab a grab a bite to eat grab a drink we'll be back at to Eastern with segmenting properties and building comp sets, which would be another great session. And um, just a huge thank you to everybody. And um, I wanna let everyone know that the, the VRM Intel team does still seem to have some power down there in, in, um, in Alabama. So we're, we're hoping everybody's safe and doing well, but um, appreciate everybody taking the time to learn about these new tools. And um, we'll see you back here in about 20 minutes. Thanks for not making us select a winner. Yeah. <laughs> everybody was a winner there were no winners and losers thank you guys have a good afternoon everyone bye-bye